Welcome to another episode of The Power of the Cross. My name is Angelo Parker. And I am Pastor Kamara Parker. We pastor Faith Family Worship Center in Southside, Richmond, Virginia. Uh, our website is www.ffwcrva.org. We'd love for you to come and join us for a service. Uh, we're on YouTube and Instagram at FFWCRVA. Uh, you can find us there and Facebook as well. Um, so we're on, on social media platforms there. Before we begin today, we're gonna open up uh, with the word of prayer. So let's pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you for allowing us to come to together one more time to hear from your word. Your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. It guides us and directs us. I'm asking right now for your Holy Spirit to guide us into what to say and how to say it. I'm asking that you anoint the people's ears to hear and their hearts to receive your word with gladness. Let it be all done according to your glory, according to your will, according to your purpose. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus that I pray. Amen. 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 Well, God bless each and every single one of you. Uh, like I said, this is the Power of the Cross uh, TV broadcast. Uh, the Lord laid it on our hearts to, to use this medium to reach people uh, to teach them the, and, and to preach the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. What makes this broadcast different uh, is something that we, that we do and, and the message that we preach is actually deals with something more than just salvation. It deals with how we live for God. Absolutely. How we live for God is so valuable to a believer because a lot of believers are just taught that once they accept Jesus Christ as their savior, that everything is gonna be just great, mm -hmm. that there'll be no more troubles, there'll be no more sorrows, oh boy. Then there'll be no more grief. <laughs> but what we have learned in our own walk is that we need to know how to walk in what God has provided for us. Yes. And that whole process is called sanctification. So, you know, we've used some buzzwords, uh, and I'm saying it like that so you'll understand. We've talked about justification, how we have been made innocent, how have we have been declared new creations, you know, all mm -hmm. because of our faith in Jesus Christ and what he has accomplished. But after, you know, and we were, let me explain when I say but, we were sanctified right away, instant sanctification. But as we live this life, as we walk as believers, by our faith, we are each day, go, we are going on to perfection. We are learning how to live a saved life, a walk that is perfected each day. That's very important for a believer to understand because when we have failures, when we have pitfalls, mm -hmm. when we have trials, mm -hmm. we fall into temptations, yes. we want to give up, but we can't give up because the Holy Spirit is ever there waiting to help us in our time of need. But we gotta keep our faith in what Jesus did for us at the cross. That's why we're coming to you telling you about the power of the cross. Because what Jesus did for us at Calvary provided us a power yes. and the power lives inside of us mm -hmm. and it helps us, it guides us, it trains us, it teaches us, it does all the things that we need. God provided that and he does that on a daily basis. That power, we need more of that power. We need all that we can get. So, you know, we can grow in in grace. Like, so in the grace that God has provided us, the, the love, the, the effectual working of the Holy Spirit, the help that we have to live this life. We need to grow in grace and we need to grow in the knowledge of who Jesus Christ is. Amen. So when we look at this and what we're talking about and what we're preaching and what we're teaching, it is the message of the cross. It's always been in the Bible, it's always been there, but unfortunately, the church has gone away. Um, this may sound harsh, this may sound cruel, but it is what it is. The church has gone away from sound biblical teaching and is looking towards the, the things of the world to try to uh, solve the problems of sin because that's the problem of mankind. Yes, it, it's not the fact that you know you didn't you don't uh, you don't have a job or you don't have enough money or it's not any of those things. The problem with mankind, men and women, is sin. We are ruled and we are dominated by sin. And unfortunately, there are people who are in the church that suppose that are supposed to have um, a victorious life, but they're living bound by alcohol, pornography, they're living bound by, by uh, any pill addiction, they're living bound by anxiety, they're living bound by all these things. So my question in this is, what makes somebody who's in church 
that is bound by these things different than anybody in the world. Really, the, the, the difference is this. They're, they will go to heaven. It's not that they, won't, that they won't be saved, but unfortunately, they're living a life that is, as, as I heard somebody say, they're miserably saved. Yes. And we don't need, it's not intended, it shouldn't be that we live a miserably saved life. The things that this world has to offer, offer us, you know, the fame that we seek, the fortune, the, the likes on social media, uh, the attention that we want to get, the fulfillment of, of our desires. What happens at the end of it? Well, I remember when I would go and I would go get me a bottle of gin, right? And I would finish the bottle of gin. And what was at the end of that bottle of gin was a headache. Absolutely. <laughs> and it, was, it wasn't anything that helped me. And after that headache was a dryness and, and dryness of my whole body. So we look at the things that we think are fun. We look at the things that this world tells us that, you know, we need to hoop it up and holler it up. But, but what it leads us to is an early death. What it leads us to is outside of God's purpose. And there are people that are in the body of Christ that are bound by various different things that God says you, shall, you should be free from. He, you, it shall not have dominion over you. And that's what the message of the cross teaches. And that's why we're bringing you the power of the cross because, it's given, because God has given you the power to live the life that he's called you to live by his grace, which is all sufficient. Absolutely. Now. Last episode, we are we're concluding, we were talking about how, uh, what the message of the cross is, the power of the cross, how Jesus Christ is the source of all that we receive from God, but the cross is the means to receiving all the things that God has given us. Mm -hmm. We had started our study in Romans and we've actually gone all the way to verse, uh, Romans 6, verse uh, 1 through 6, where, where we stopped. Um, and I'm gonna start reading at verse 6. You can start reading at verse 6. So we read verse 6 and we stopped at verse 8. Okay. Yep. So knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he who is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more, death has no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he lives, he lives unto God. Likewise, you also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Read the next one. Let, no, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, mm -hmm. that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, mm -hmm. but yield yourselves unto God as those who are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but under grace. Now, as we finish this portion of Romans chapter six, we have to understand that, and that verse 14 is really the crux of the message of the cross. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law, but under grace. Everything that Paul has laid out in Romans chapter six tells us about our sanctification. And we have to know, and I'm just gonna go through real quick in, verse, in Romans six chapter, um, six chapter, verse three, it says, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. It tells us, it tells us we are in Christ Jesus. As my wife said earlier, and as we said on the previous broadcast, our position now with God is we are in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. We are in Christ Jesus. Jesus. This isn't referring to water baptism. This is referring to the believer's baptism into Christ. His death, his life, his death, his burial, his resurrection. We are risen to a newness of life. Verse six, it says, knowing this, now that we know our position in Christ, and, and we mentioned, I didn't mention condition, and you did, but I didn't. 
Our condition is that we're dying daily and we're going on to perfection. We're decreasing, but, but Christ is increasing in us. We're learning how to walk by faith and not by sight. This is the believer's everyday position, that when obstacles, when circumstances, when troubles come our way, when tests, trials, temptations, when they hit us in our face, we don't go to the old way of dealing with things. We don't fall into, into the temptation. We don't handle it by our own recourse, but we go to the one that solved all problems. That's Jesus Christ. That's the power. That's the right. That's the privilege that we have. We go to God through Jesus Christ and say, Lord, I need your help. Yes. So since we know that's, that's where we are, and we talk about now in verse 6, it says, Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Who we were is crucified with Christ. The person that I used to be, the sin nature that used to rule, that's been crucified mm -hmm. with Christ. And it says that, is, that, excuse me, let me read it again. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So since we're dead now to the sin nature, we don't have to serve that sin nature that ruled in our heart as a mm -hmm. king. That's what it did. It, it sat there on the throne and had his scepter. Yep. I see it with his crown cocked to the side, like I'm ruling this place. Yes. But Jesus said, no, you're not. Not anymore. You, you don't Jesus. rule me. Yes. You don't have control. You don't have dominion over me. You have no power over me. And as we, as we continue, this is what it says. It says this, and I want to read this in verse 7. It says, for he that is dead is freed from sin. We are freed from the sin nature. Why do I keep saying the sin nature? You're saying the sin nature because you, you want people to understand it's not the action of sin yes. or the acts of sin. See, we as a body of Christ, mm -hmm. we believed that our acts of sin mm -hmm. was sin. Yeah, we've been taught that. Right. We were taught that, you know, if we did wrong, then, then we were unsaved. Right. Right. Anything we did, it, it took us out of God's, uh, out, of, out of our salvation. But when we are, if we haven't gotten to this term, we've talked about it some, and we're gonna talk about it more later on. But being justified by faith means that if our faith is in Christ Jesus, that we are looked at as Jesus is looked at. Because we are immersed in Christ Jesus, as I said in, in chapter three, in verse three, because we are immersed in Christ Jesus, God doesn't see us. Right. He sees Jesus Christ. Right. Our faith in Christ is what justifies us, and it's just as if we've never sinned. Right. We are not declared not guilty, as in some courts. Right. We're declared innocent. innocent. And being declared innocent, it's how many of us have, hopefully not many, but if you've ever gone before a judge, knowing, especially with traffic violations, <laughs> knowing good and well that you are guilty. It's as if the judge looks at you knowing too that you are guilty, but he says, okay, I see the position you're in, and so therefore, you're innocent. Yes. You would, you would be so elated and so <laughs> great and so grateful and so glad and would yes. run out of that courtroom rejoicing because you don't have to pay the fine. You know, you, there's no infraction. Your insurance doesn't go up. You're so excited. Well, that's what God did for us. Yes. And even to this point, so when we, when we talk about that, we, that's an example of God's grace, right? Mm -hmm. Now, if I were a, a, a habitual speeder and I got off like that because, God, you know, the judge said, hey, you're free. How foolish would I be to go back out there and start speeding again and just start going back at it? That would mean I was crazy. This is, <laughs> this is where we are in Christ Jesus. God says we should, we, that we should no longer sin, that we should not continue in sin because of his grace. Absolutely. He's given us, he's absolved us, he's justified us, he's made us right. And because of that, we shouldn't continue to live in a, in a lifestyle, in a habitual, in a, in a uh, just a uh, no, known sin that, call, that we just is a part of who we are. We are dying daily. That old person that you used to be, you shouldn't be that person tomorrow. You should be, as I said earlier, growing in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Amen. So this is in, in verse 9, and that's where we started, right? Am I correct? Mm-hmm. So it says, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death have no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. 
So what this tells us is the fact that, you know, we know that Jesus Christ, that Jesus the Christ, he, he was raised from the dead. He died, but he was risen. But guess what? Because he's risen, there's only one, there's only one death that every man must face. Absolutely. Right? So as I read in a previous episode, I read uh, in um, verse 23 in the sixth chapter, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This is what Paul is talking about in that scripture. You know, we, we, uh, we should be dead. Mm -hmm. We owe God our lives as far as the fact that we are sinners. There's no reconciling ourselves back to God. But what Jesus Christ did is he did it for us. Yes. And because he died and he died once for all, now our faith being placed in him, he gives us the, the, his life. So we trade the penalty of our death. Mm -hmm. He pays it and he says, okay, I've given you my death. Now I'm also give you my life. Absolutely. So it's a swap there that happens. It's the, the swap. The swap happens. The divine exchange. Exactly. The divine. <laughs> that's the word. I was going to say that. Yes. And all it requires for us is faith. Yes. Faith that it happened. Yes. Faith that it that it the change is needed for me. That the change is taking place in me. That mm -hmm. the change is continual in yes. me. That I'm being saved. Yes. Hallelujah. Knowing where I am, knowing my position is in the heavenly places with Christ Jesus, knowing my condition isn't there, but I continue to walk by faith and I continue to grow in grace and I continue to place my faith in Jesus Christ. That's what that's where we are as Christians. That's how our sanctification should be, because it says this in verse 11. It says, likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, mm -hmm. talking about the sin nature, yes. but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. So just oh, as Jesus go. is alive unto God, as it says in the, in the previous verse, we are alive unto God. Yes. I, I, I'm going to ask the question. I'm not going to answer it. And I, I know you don't like it when I do this. <laughs> <laughs> but... When, when we were born and we, we were before we were saved, did God see us as alive or dead? So before we were saved, mm -hmm. God saw us as dead. He, we were dead. Mm -hmm. He saw us as being dead. So even though we were alive naturally, spiritually, we were separated from him. And that's what the death is. So I was going to say, I don't know if you were going this route, mm -hmm. but... We, since God saw us as dead, this is that whole phrase that you hear some believers say that you have to be born again. Absolutely. Because when we were alive in our sin, we were dead to God. But when we said yes to Jesus and we, we gave our heart and our mind to him, he then does a new thing in us and he causes us to be born again. Now that's a whole another story and subject we can talk about, but you must be born again in order for you to really understand who God is, understand the change he's made in you. You just can't come to him with your, the sin nature ruling you. You can't come with your, you know, your traditions and your religion and expect God to accept that. You must have a new heart, a new spirit, and he must put his spirit in you to lead and guide you into the into his will, into his ways. And this is a process of being born again. Just real quick, I want to read John chapter 3 verse 5. And this is Jesus speaking to Nicodemus. And because he just told Nicodemus, you know, you got to be born again, Nicodemus. And and Nicodemus asked the question, how can an old man enter back into his uh, mother's womb, right? right? He, Nicodemus was thinking fleshly, and Jesus told him, you know, that's the natural birth. What I'm talking about is a spiritual birth. And he says in verse 5 in, in, uh, in John chapter 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That's what it takes for us to go to heaven. When we close our eyes, when we breathe our, breathe our final breath here on this earth, we're gonna go one of two places. We're gonna go to heaven or we're gonna go to hell. We don't go to heaven based on our own works. We don't go to heaven based on who we are and our stature. We don't go to, based, we don't go to heaven based on any charitable activities of our own. We go to heaven if our faith is placed in Christ and Him crucified. Everybody else that, that does not believe on Jesus Christ goes to eternal separation, which is hell. That's not being taught, but it's the truth. We can't 
we can't just teach the love of God without teaching the consequences of disobeying God. Absolutely. We have to know that God is real. We have to believe that he is, Absolutely. as it says in Hebrews chapter 11, and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And you know, as we're discussing this, we are diligently seeking yes. God in our lives. Absolutely. This is part of the process we're talking about of sanctification. Each day we're seeking his will in our lives. Mm -hmm. We believe who he is, we believe what he's done for us, and every day we're seeking him. Mm -hmm. So when we, we talk about the next part of this in Romans 6, starting at verse 12, it says, let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body. So if we're dead to sin, we're dead to the sin nature ruling in us like a king, don't allow it to, to have authority in your body again. Don't, don't allow sin to, to cause you to, to uh, get out of God's will. Don't allow sin to make decisions for you that will be against what God's plan is for you. Mm -hmm. And you can easily do that, mm -hmm. which is, this is the part that we're talking about. What happens is, we're living, uh, we're humans. We're, we're living real lives. We're gonna come up against cir circumstances absolutely and situations will. that will test our faith. Yes, absolutely. I mean, the testing of our faith, which means that what, when we come across these situations, when we come across these tests, when we come across these trials, how do we respond to them? Our lives are based on how we respond to it. our salvation, our sanctification is based on how we respond to these trials. Do I respond to them out of my own actions or I, do I go to my heavenly father, which I now have a right to go to yes. and say, I need your help. This is what it means when it says, and then this is when it says, let not sin therefore. It, it's, it's, we have an option. Mm -hmm. It's not that the Holy Spirit makes this happen. It's right. not that we, we are dragged along as we, as we were with the sin nature. We chose to live in sin. Now we have to choose to live in righteousness. We chose to live the way that we wanted to live. Now we have to choose to live the way God wants us to live. But now there's a difference between our power source. There was a power source that, was, that led us to death and condemnation, which was the, the sin nature. But now the, how, but the power source that we have is the Holy Spirit, which le leads us to life. And that's what the Holy Spirit provides. It says, let not sin therefore, let not the sin nature therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it and the lust thereof. Neither yield your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that were alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Now, your members, I mm -hmm. think we need to make sure we clarify what members are. So the members of your body, your tongue, mm -hmm. your hands, your mind, your, I was going to yep. say that your mind, mm -hmm. your heart. You know, th these are the members that we're referring to. Mm -hmm. You can use your tongue to either bring life or bring death. Mm -hmm. And, but I wanna make sure I, I clarify something. We cannot use our tongue to manifest things that are, are uh, out of thin air. Yes. So, you know, some of us have been taught that we can speak things into being and they'll manifest. Mm -hmm. That's not true. The scripture tells us that God is the only one that yes. can speak things into being. Why? He's the creator of all. Yes. And since he is the creator of all and he is not a liar, he can speak things into being. We can't speak anything into, be, into being. We can only speak what God's word says and his word there is life and healing to us. Yes. So we can speak what God's will is in our lives mm -hmm. and that is us using our tongue for righteousness. We can use- For edification. Absolutely. For building people up. See, this is when we agree with God's word, then it manifests. Absolutely. Because it's God's word. But when we go outside of God's word and try to make things happen on our own, that's when we get into flesh. That's when we think that we are little gods. And that's a false teaching that has permeated the body of Christ for years. We can't manifest things as though that, as, as they, as though that, excuse me, we can't manifest, let me say that again. We can't manifest things that aren't as though they were. God is the one who does that. Absolutely. But what we do have the right and the privilege and the honor and the ability to do, the ability to do because of the Holy Spirit now empowering us because our faith is in Christ Jesus and we now have access to this divine power, we can live the life that God has called us to live. We don't, we don't have to do that, fill in your own blank, anymore. We don't have to be that anymore. We can be who God has called us to be. For sin shall not have dominion over you. 
So I want to go back up to that previous verse. Yes. Because it says we yield ourselves unto God mm -hmm. as those who are alive from the dead. We yield ourselves. We give ourselves up. We don't, we don't fight it, and that's something that we've, we've done as Christians. We've fought oh, yeah. it. We've gone against it. But we yield ourselves. We rest in the truth of the gospel. You know, as Christians, when this is always the issue, we get saved, and now we're, we're, we're grateful for being saved. We're grateful for the change. But now we want to tell God, look what we can do. Yep. Look, what, what, look what, what ability we have. So we try to offer up our abilities. We try to offer up our, our ways. Mm -hmm. And God doesn't want our ways. He wants his way. And so he wants us to willingly give ourselves over so that he can use us in the way that he wants to use, yes. which is to bring forth righteousness. To be a witness here on this earth, to be, to be someone who shows forth God's power through the change that's happened to me. Because it says in verse 14, and this is where we're going to end, for sin shall not have dominion over you. It shall not have dominion. It shall not rule. It shall not control. It shall not have dominion over you. Because we are no longer under law. It's not about what we do, but it's all about the grace of God. His love shed abroad to us that we didn't deserve, that we didn't earn, but it allows us and it gives us the ability to live the life that he's called us to live. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's grace. Yes. That's what this is all about. That's what the message of the cross is. And this is the very power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we're going to pray right now as we close because we want you to know that this is going to be, it's going to be coming more. And you're going to hear more and more of this, but we're going to see a change in your life. So I'm going to let you pray. All right. Yes. Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Jesus. we thank you and we give you glory right now, Lord. We thank you Hallelujah. for this time, Lord, that we're able to present the gospel, Lord. We're asking, Lord, that you anoint the ears thank and the Jesus. minds to hear and receive, Lord. Hallelujah. This message is powerful, God, to know that you are all that we need, Lord, and what you did at Calvary was everything yes, we that we need, Lord. Lord, I'm asking right now, there's hearts and minds, Lord, that are seeking you, Lord, that you open up this yes, word, Lord. Lord, that they can really see your glory, Lord, yes, Lord, that the change comes in, Lord, and that the Holy Spirit begins to revelate your understanding and your wisdom to them right now, Father. I thank you, Lord, for this for this for these people lord i thank you right now lord for your mercy and your grace towards us you're just so good god you're just so wonderful we give you praise and glory in jesus name amen thank you all and we love you very god much bless you we'll see you next time My name is Pastor Angelo Parker. And I'm Pastor Kamara Parker. And we want to thank you for watching our broadcast.